The dreaded to-do list. We all have one and it's never ending. As soon as you complete one or two tasks, somehow 10 have been added to your list. Wash, rinse, repeat day after day. The truth is we're all gonna have a to-do list until the day we die. That's just how the world works, I guess. I know that's morbid. So the goal shouldn't be to clear the list. The goal should be to embrace habits that will increase your productivity. Remember, productivity isn't about always getting more done because as we already said, there's always more to do. Instead, productivity is about getting the necessary things done so you can free up time for things that might otherwise be pushed aside, like spending time with your family, exercising or embracing new hobbies. I can't promise what I'm gonna do or not do. In this video, I'm gonna share five tips to help you actually finish your to-do list so you can have more time to do the things you love. Tip number one is to shrink your list. I know that sounds obvious, so hear me out. If you're looking at a to-do list with 10, 20, 50, even 100 items on it, you're going to feel overwhelmed, which leads to procrastination. If we know the problem with lengthy to-do lists is feeling overwhelmed, then we can find a solution for the problem. The most obvious way to shrink your to-do list is to not add as much to it. So say no to things, delegate tasks, ask for help. But at the end of the day, you're probably still gonna have a fairly lengthy to-do list. So you have to manipulate your list to make it appear shorter than it actually is. And the way to do that is using a power list. A power list is a focused list of just three items you're going to complete each day. Now, obviously you still have to keep track of all the other things you have to do. So personally, I like to have a weekly to-do list and a future to-do list. The weekly to-do list is around 21 tasks that I plan on completing that week. Then each day I choose three items from the weekly to-do list to complete for my power list. Any items that I'm not gonna get done that week go on my future to-do list. I have an analogy for this. It's a little weird, so hear me out. Toilet paper. Dwight, why is the toilet paper only half apply? <laughs> we all have the roll of toilet paper that we are currently using. Hopefully it's on the little holder. If not, it's maybe sitting next to it or up on the counter. But regardless, that is the toilet paper you are using first. Then you probably have some stashed in a cabinet or maybe in a little holder back behind the toilet. That's the toilet paper that you're gonna use next once the toilet paper you are currently using is gone. After that, you hopefully have a stockpile somewhere in your residence, whether that's in another cabinet or out in a garage or even in an attic, wherever you have space, you probably have all the extra toilet paper that won't fit in the bathroom, but you wanna make sure you get to. I recommend building a habit of creating that weekly to-do list, maybe every Sunday night. Pick out 21 items, either from your future to-do list or based on your calendar for the upcoming week. Then build the habit on a daily basis of moving three items from your weekly to-do list to your power list. If you're going to struggle to remember to do this, try habit stacking. Pair that habit with something you're already doing. I don't wanna do anything. For example, every night I take a vitamin. So after I take my vitamin, I'm gonna sit down and choose my power list for the next day. That way I don't forget. Tip number two is to keep all of your to-dos in one place. A big mistake I've made over the years is having all of my separate to-do lists in different places. My teaching to-dos were in my lesson planner, my personal to-dos were on a pad of paper, and my business to-dos were in an app. It is very easy to forget about things if they're out of view or not visible. It's kind of like cooking Thanksgiving dinner. I feel like every year there's something that gets forgotten, such as the cranberry sauce, or something gets left in the oven like the sweet potatoes and they end up getting burnt. And now no one eats owls for Thanksgiving. Our brains are responsible for holding so much information on a daily basis, so we have to make it easy for ourselves. We need to, number one, write down all of our to-dos so we're not struggling to remember them, and number two, keep all of those to-dos in one place. This means we need a system to organize all the different lists that we may have in our life. You might want to organize your to-dos by work and personal, or you might want to have them all in one place, but maybe have them split up by things to do today, things to do this week, and so on. The system is up to you so long as you keep them all in the same place. 
obviously you can write them down, but the chances of you carrying that list with you everywhere you go are slim. I prefer keeping all my to-dos digitally. That way I can access them on a computer or my phone or my tablet. Chances are I have at least one of those near me at all times. Personally, I love using Google Tasks because I can easily move items from one list to another. And that works well for me and my system of having a power list, a weekly to-do list, and a future to-do list. But you could use the Notes app, Google Keep, or tons of other websites and apps. If you are interested in the difference between Google Keep, Google Tasks, and the Notes app, I do have a video which I will link for you down below. Just choose one location to keep all of your to-dos, and if it is an app, I recommend adding that app to the favorite section on your phone. That way, it's easy for you to access. Tip number three is to break down projects. You now have your to-do list organized, you have your focus power list that you're gonna get done each day, but chances are there will still be tasks that you procrastinate on. Michael tends to procrastinate a bit whenever he has to do work. The most likely reason you're putting tasks off is because there's something unattractive about them, something that you're dreading. Inventory is boring. We have to make things easy on ourselves. And one of the easiest, pun intended, ways to do that is to break down tasks into smaller chunks. If you have a young kid and they don't wanna eat their dinner, what do you do? You cut up the broccoli into smaller pieces and make them eat one little piece at a time. You also probably bribe them with dessert, but that's another story for another day. <laughs> These larger tasks are technically projects. Projects are large tasks made up of smaller tasks. Lesson planning is a great example of this. You have to figure out kind of the flow of the lesson. You probably have to create slides. You probably have to create assignments and make copies. There's a lot that goes into the larger task of lesson planning. We never want to put the overarching project as a single to-do list item because we're going to look at it and we know it's going to be time consuming and we're going to put it off. Instead, we want to take that larger task and break it down into those smaller tasks so we're motivated to get them done. I will say this takes time and practice to get right. You don't want to break it down into such small tasks that they only take a couple of minutes to complete, but you also don't want the task to be too big that you procrastinate doing them. If you find a to-do list item that stays on your list for a lengthy period of time, it's probably because it's too big of an item and you're putting it off. So try breaking it down. I know personally I had get taxes done on my to-do list and then I never wanted to do it. So I broke it down into find a CPA, gather the paperwork, update my spreadsheets and so on. If you do use Google Tasks, you can actually create subtasks under each task to break down those larger projects. I will link my Google Task tutorial video for you down in the description box if you need more information. Tip number four is to prioritize your tasks. We just talked about putting things off and procrastinating. Typically when you do that, you work on the really easy tasks that you probably don't need to be doing in the first place. I was always famous for relabeling things in my classroom or reorganizing drawers rather than lesson planning and grading, which are those tasks I need to actually be focusing on. You want to always be moving the needle forward, which means you actually get results for the actions you're putting into place. Those less important tasks aren't moving the needle forward. So instead, we have to prioritize those more difficult tasks that are going to allow us to actually get results. So how do we do this? Well, we have to build discipline through our habits. So here's a couple of ideas you can try. You can always front load your week. So when you look at your weekly to-do list, whatever those most difficult items are, you want to complete those earlier on in the week when you have more brain power and you're a little bit more motivated to get things done. Another option is to choose just one difficult item to complete each day. This kind of spreads it out throughout the week. Within Google Tasks, you can order items on your list by clicking and dragging. Once again, I have that tutorial video that shows you exactly how to do it. So when you create your weekly to-do list, you could click and drag all of those more difficult items to the very beginning. That way they get your attention from the get-go. And to go along with that, tip number five is to start with your most difficult task. Sometimes this is called eating the frog. Eat a frog. That sounds promising. Which comes from a book by Brian Tracy, which comes from a quote by Mark Twain. But the general concept is if you eat the frog or you get your most difficult task done first each day, even if the day falls apart, at least you got that most difficult item done. 
Plus, it typically kind of springboards you into being more productive throughout the day. I've always said activity leads to more activity and inactivity leads to more inactivity. You know those days where you sleep in and then you kind of trudge down to the couch, you don't get anything done. But on those days where you get up, maybe you make your bed right away, you go for a walk, you set yourself up for success. You kind of have that momentum that carries you throughout the day. So when you create your power list, you should also decide which tasks you're going to complete first. Of those three items, which one is the most difficult? You can add an asterisk next to it or even a little frog emoji. That way, when the next day comes, you know exactly what task you have to dive into first. Obviously, that does require a little bit of discipline to actually get it done, but you are setting yourself up to make that easier by knowing exactly what to focus on. That is it. Those are my five tips to help you actually finish your to-do list. Number one, shrink your list. Number two, keep all your to-dos in one place. Number three, break down projects. Number four, prioritize your tasks. And number five, get the most difficult tasks done first. If you want more information on Google Tasks, I will link that tutorial video where I also share some tips and tricks down in the description box. And if you wanna see how I implement some of these strategies in my own life, I do have a week in the life vlog, which I will link for you down below as well. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.